to the fundamentals of chapter 14. We are doing some work energy related um, problems, so utilizing the work energy principle, um, which if you're just tuning in this is your first time, the work energy principle just tells us that the initial kinetic energy plus the sum of all the, um, I guess, all the work done on that system is equal to the final kinetic energy. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna, the, the way I'm going to set this problem was, up is I'm going to identify the forces that cause work on the system, I individually isolate them, solve for them, and then plug them into the final work energy uh, principle equation. Okay, so let's see. Let's say you want to spring okay which is given to us by this equation all right s2 squared minus one half k s1 squared right we're not dealing with a spring in this equation so I know this term is going to be zero let's do u one two um, gravity graph Okay, work done by gravity is given to us like this, delta y. All right. Now, this, you know, the motor is exerting a force of 300 newtons on the cable. Determine the speed of the 20 kilogram crate when it travels s equals 10 meters up the plane. So, because it's traveling up the plane, essentially, it is climbing a certain it's changing its position in the y direction as well as in the x direction. Okay, so we need to know, knowing that this is 30 degrees, what is this total elevation change? That'll be our delta y. Okay, so we can write this as uh, y2 minus y1. Okay, so this is it, 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 y1 is zero. Okay y2 is going to be 10 sine 30 okay remember cosine cah co ka, so katoa it'll be this one this will be 30 and we'll need that it actually man eh, we don't need that 30 cosine oops sorry 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 10 cosine 10 cosine 30 and this will be 10 sine 30. So total distance that the gravity, or I guess the weight of that object, uh, the force of gravity acts on that object, is just a change in y, okay? I'm here moving my hands like if I'm explaining it, but you guys can't see that. <laughs> my bad. All right, so this will be minus mg, so 20 times 9.81 times a change in y. So we know y1 is 0. Uh, let's see what this is. Sine 30 is 0.5, so we get times. So y2 is equal to 5. So that's the total change in y position, or the y displacement. Okay, And that will give us minus 20 times 9.81 times 5. Alright, this is joules. Alright. What else do we have? Oh, we have the work done by, let's say, our conservative force. Which is going to be force times distance, okay, times cosine theta. All right. All right. This theta is the angle between the force and the displacement vector. So, look at this box. This is my force of 300 newtons, and my displacement vector is also going uphill, so they're parallel to each other. So the angle between those two vectors is zero. So all I end up getting is force 
times my distance that that force acted on that object with, or for for the total distance that force was acting on that object for. So it's going to be force times the total distance, which was 10 meters. Okay, and that'll end up being 3,000 joules. All right. Um, is so now is that all? Oh wait, no, there is more. There is the friction, okay? And that's another one. So non-conservative force, okay? It's gonna be and remember, friction is always gonna be acting opposite to where the object is moving. So in this case, my friction, right? is acting opposite to the displacement vector. So that means, let's look over here where, where I'm drawing that dot. If my friction is in this direction, right, the angle here between these two is 180 degrees, okay? And that's where you always get a minus friction force times your displacement, okay? Or, Again, you can apply it like this, Fd cosine theta. What's that force? Well, it's F of k, oh, sorry, F of k, kinetic friction, times total distance. Angle between the displacement and the friction force is 180, so we have minus. Okay? How do we find friction force? Well, we know it's going to be mu k times the normal. Okay? So let's let's solve for that. That's, that should be you know that's pretty simple. Let's let's go back to uh, statics. Oh wow! I just deleted the uh, <laughs> I just deleted the drawing. Um, forgot to switch layers. Anyways, um, let's let's draw them out. So we know that this is the normal. This is the weight. Okay, so I'm only interested, you know, forces in the y direction. Remember, this is my coordinate system, x, positive x, positive y. So, the normal force is going to be equal to the weight cosine 30. Okay, so the normal... Let's, let's just prove that real quick. Let's say you need a refresher. Remember, in the y direction, there's no acceleration. Okay? Um, so, let's see. This will be the normal minus mg cosine 30. Okay? Equals zero. Okay, so let's plug that in here. mg cosine 30 equals 0.3 times 20 times 9.81 cosine 30. All right, so fk So the kinetic friction force will be 50.97 newtons. Okay. So let's go back over here. Let's go back to, you know, I did, what's the work done by the conservative force done by the motor, 300 newtons, and then the force done by the non-conservative force, which is the friction. And then we have minus 50.97 times the distance that friction acted on that object for, total distance, which is 10, we're given that. All right, and you should get like 509.7 joules. All right, now I've, I pretty much have everything here now. I have, there's no other work on this, no other work being done on, the, on, the, on this system. 
So now let's just apply all these to the work energy uh, relationship up there. So I have one half mv1 squared. Okay, now let's start summing up everything else. I have zero work done by a spring. I have minus 981 joules of work done by gravity. I have 3,000 joules of work done by the motor and minus 509.7 joules of work done uh, by friction. Uh, and that's all equal to the kinetic energy final, which is mv2 squared. Okay. We know that the, um, the box starts from rest, so I know that this term goes to zero. And all I end up with on the left-hand side is 3,000 minus 981 minus 509.7. 1509.3 times 2 divided by the mass all squared equals final velocity. And then I end up with 12.285, so let's just say 12.29 meters per second or just 12.3 whichever one you feel more comfortable with all right that's it that's all for this problem again you could have just done this on one line that's you know if you, that's if you feel very comfortable with this material do it all on one line plow right through if you're struggling with identifying everything just even if there's no spraying on the thing just break it down, compartment, compartmentalize this as like I did here, just got potential, or, you know, work done by a spring, work done by gravity, work done by conservative force one, conservative force two, conservative, let's say you have three of them, and then work done by a non-conservative force, and then now you sum them all up, because that's what this middle term tells you up here in the work energy relationship. All right, hope this video helped. Um, some of you, uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I'm always checking and I'm always replying. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Thanks so much for your time and attention. I'll see you guys in the next video.